Hey, look, we get familiar with Chrissy. It's the flock boy himself, the grown crit, the right one. You know what I'm saying? Rody Rose. I tap in. This shit deep for the rap. Feeling like Prince, we some slaves to our craft. First dream was the NBA draft. Gap in between that, snake next to a giraffe. Remember? Well, we are back. <laughs> um, you know, we had some. <laughs> All we can really do is laugh about it. Right. We just had some technical difficulties the first time. Yeah. But um, what you said, we're going to come back better. Yeah. Stronger. Exactly. Exactly. But um, so we're going to call this part two. Yeah. We're just going to call it part two. For sure. What's up? How you doing? I'm good, man. Great. Good. Um, Good, good. For those that you that don't know, this is Rody Rose, by the way. He's on Get Familiar. What's happening? What's happening? What's up? Yeah. Um, let's just get right into it. So your backstory. I know you and I come from the same neighborhood. We grew up in the same neighborhood. But I just wanted to kind of get some more insight. Um, like what, what streets, what part of the district did you grow up in? Like what schools did you go to? Maybe from middle school to high school. Let's talk about the beginning stages of Rody. Oh yeah, man. Um, the hood shit. Uh, I lived on Madden. Okay. Yeah, sixty twenty one. Uh, and um, got over there like probably like around fifteen, fourteen years old around that around that time. Um, I was still going to work in the high school, so okay. I would literally like catch the two ten bus. Yes. I walk down sixty mm -hmm. on the two ten Crenshaw. Yeah. Crenshaw bus taking me all the way to the Gardena bus. Okay. Well, I have to get on another bus to get to the Imperial. Yeah, for then, sure. Yeah, then get on the Gardena bus. You know what I'm saying? So in high school, I was staying in the hood okay. and I was still going to Gardena High School and shit. So, um, so you was already enrolled at Gardena when you moved over there off of Madden? Yeah, I was already enrolled. Yeah. Okay. I was already enrolled already, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, older cousins and shit from, from the district, from the hood, you feel me? Um, so I was already, you know what I'm saying, destined, you know, to go that way, you know what I'm saying? Because they was already representing, and, you know, at a, at a high level, too. Right. Like really <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So you probably look at me. Yeah. I, come from the, I come from the east side, you feel me? Didn't so, know that. Yeah, I come from the east side, from the projects. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was Which born, projects? The Pebble Project. Okay. Yeah, I was born over there, so, you know, we just was fly. Like, my dad was fly already. You feel me? So you look at it and then be like, all right, nah, because ain't really, and he got over here a little later. Mm -hmm. But on, on the inside, it's really like, you know what I'm saying? So your upbringing was your mom and your dad in the household? Nah, just my mom. Just your mom. It was already separated. Okay. You feel me? Uh, but you had a good relationship with your dad? Oh, yeah, up top. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. Yeah. So living with mom, dad was in another household. You Are you coming from the, no, you're coming from, Actually, from the projects to Madden. Actually, you're no, at Gardena. No, no, no. It wasn't the projects to Madden, but it was, it was like I basically like slowly migrated okay. from the east side to the west. Got it. The first stop, it was my, it was like it was a, a family-owned house mm -hmm. that was in the Hoovers. Got it. Yeah, it was on seventy-seven. You know what I'm saying? So I was a kid like seven at that time. You know what I mean? Like what? Like no, I was like nine. Mm -hmm. I was around nine. So you know we. Nine years old, my daddy fast life, drugs, you know, uh, big cars, mm -hmm. big jewelry, you know what I'm saying? And I always thought, you know, because I walked to the store and I see Hoover on the wall, I always thought he was from Hoover. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, I, you know, growing up and then got a little older and shit, you know. And then, uh, shit, I was like, all right, found out my daddy was really a blood, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, damn, crazy. So what was. <laughs> Like, okay, so your daddy a blood. So how did he feel or take you being a crib? Oh, uh, it was like, you know, like I said, it was stages. Yeah. It was stages first. Like I'm I come from a different generation. Yeah. That's kind of like, you know, bloods of bloods and crips of crips. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of stages and shit like, uh, clicks, mm -hmm. fucking with the certain clicks first. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, Reason why I didn't get put on 60s when I was staying over there is because I was in love with basketball. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Okay. You know, I still have basketball dreams. You feel me? So I'm like, hold on. Like, you know, mm -hmm. when I step outside, like, I step outside. So you were playing basketball at Gardena? 
I played, yeah. What position you play? I played the shooting guard, too. Okay. Yeah, I played the two. Okay. Yeah. But I got cut. How tall are you? Were you even five, tall enough for two? I'm 5'11". Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm right, I guess. Yeah. But I was shorter, though. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Right, back then. It's high school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody was, yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, it's high school. Yeah. Niggas is too short for their yeah, position. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's the true. Center ain't, the center the forward. That's true. The way, you know what I'm saying? The point guard don't supposed to be on the team at all. That's he, true. He's too short. You know, no, you nobody have a point. there. Nobody there real height. No, you have a point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, but um, so when I step outside over there in the hood, you know what I'm saying? I go play basketball in the in the village. You feel me? In the Dorset Village. You feel yeah. me? Um, they had a little basketball court in over there, and me and mommy, you know, kung fu, we just go over there, you know, play basketball. So I was looking for the ballers, you know, and I tell my son that today, like always, oh, like you know, look. If your mom ain't able to take you there and surround yourself around the ballers, you know what I'm saying? You want to play basketball, you know what I'm saying? So mom probably got to go to work yeah. and, and do all that. So let's make sure, you know what I'm saying, you follow your dream. Yes, and go absolutely. So when I was in the hood, that's what I go do. You feel me? Yeah. I go, listen, what basketball court at? Mm -hmm. You know, and homie telling me it was in the field. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah. I went over to the field to play basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's why I was really, I was still in love, you know, with that, you know, basketball at the time. You know, when, when you know, a lot of homeboys was already on 10th Ave and, you know, Brian, wherever they was at, they was already there, you know what I mean? And I'm right there, you know what I mean? They don't even know. I'm just, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm with the baller, so. So at what point did you, I mean, if you're open to saying, at what point did you actually officially like join? Um, like, probably like two years after that. Okay. Like, yeah. You know, two years after that, there's um, it's a lot of shit going on. Mm -hmm. You know, people dying. You know, people in my family getting killed. You know what I'm saying? And, and that was a scapegoat for you. Yeah, and then and then, and then getting cut. You know, from <laughs> from, I, basketball. from basketball. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. yeah, like it, it wasn't nothing else to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no more. It wasn't no more passion. You know what I mean? It wasn't no passion. It was like, all right, it's the streets. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, um, I come from the east side, so it's like, I'm on the west side now, and all these mixed girls, mm -hmm. all these, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, all these pretty, like, oh, like, are a little different from the not west side. Say, not saying that the end. Not to say that the east side, you know what I'm saying? Because it's stages in my life, even when I got older. I mean, it's the same that. thing with the dudes, too. The dudes on the east side look different yeah. from the dudes on the west side. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing. It's, it's what you want. They don't shake, though. Right. I got older, it's like, you know what? I want my east side girl back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm at this point, I'm like, hold on. Watching the rough around edges. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's like, I just, I'm not with the too much pop, you know, sugar coating. Yes. And all what that you mean? All that shit, man. Some like, of them are like that, not all of us. What, with the west side, side girls? With the Westside girls? Yeah. No, it's not everybody. Yeah, it's not everybody. No. It's just the acting, you know, like mm -hmm. the reality show women that act like the reality show. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so, you know, sometimes I want that real authentic. Mm -hmm. Say how you really feel. Yeah. Don't worry about the look. Yeah. You know, like, it is what it is. It is what it is. It is yeah. what it is. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah. So, at what point did the music come into class? We have basketball, cut, mm -hmm. gang life. Now, now rapping, now making music. The music, it was, it was there. Um, Cause you're actually really good. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, there's some that are just rapping just to be rapping, but you're actually really good. You're lyrically, right. you have, you're lyrically there. You have a really good pen to pad. I mean, you're very, very um, vocal, and you know, you just. You're just good with words. Thank you. I mean, that's the best way to place it. You're just really, really good with words. Appreciate it. And it's hard to say that. I mean, like a lot of West Coast music has been sounding the same for so long. Mm -hmm. But I think now, like, especially like you and your crew, you guys just sound just how you sound. Right. There is no like, oh, you could tell he's from. You, we know you're from where you're from because you say it. Right. But I don't necessarily would. If I was an outsider or an out of towner, I wouldn't be like, oh, hey, he's from. Right. You know this particular part of LA and from this particular section right. we know because you, you rap it yeah. but um, they said it was always there yeah it was always there because like the uh, like performing like yeah. I used to like nine years old I had my big boom box you feel me I go outside away from my mom 
and I, you know, set it up, and I, you know, I, I repeat, like whether it was Run DMC or whether it was, you know, what I'm saying, uh, Jay Z, yeah. Tupac, yeah. like I repeat, like all that shit. So I like to say that it was always there because um, it helps me right now when I'm doing videos and I'm performing and shit. So, um, but as far as like actually diving in all the way in. Uh, the 60s man like going over there it was it was studios yeah. everywhere like it was the vibe like from the claustrophobic mixtapes I don't know if you remember those I don't. yeah claustrophobic mixtapes with all the homies you know what I'm saying like uh, everybody all the older homies but okay. so you know we go back to like CJ Mack yeah you know what I'm yeah. saying that's, that's going back yeah we go back yeah. like corrupt yes. you know what I'm saying yes. Chico yeah. and cool, like, you know, shit like that, whatever. So, um, it was, um, Hustler Rob, man. Uh, my brother Hustler Rob, like, he always found for me a studio to go to. So once again, now I'm here with the music, like how I was here with basketball. I'm trying to find, yeah. you know what I'm saying, an outlet, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to express myself. And uh, one of the homies, Hustler Rob, he, you know, take in all the homies and he'll make sure we, you know what I'm saying? Get inside, you know, whether it was from uh, the Uncle Red studio or whether it was Bear Claw studio, you know, bro gonna get us up in there and make sure we all harness our talent. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that was like right at the time when Nipsey was like coming in. You know what I'm saying? Was that maybe early 2000s? 2002, three, yeah. 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 I say I want to say I discovered them maybe in like oh yeah. five, like really like I mean I've always seen Nip around the neighborhood. I right. Verbatim remember him. Like I said, just remember seeing him at the summer schools at Crenshaw and yeah. just coming up there and stuff like that. But I think I really got tapped into the music in like oh five. Okay. Yeah. Two ponytail Nip. Park down the middle. Two ponytail Nip. Yeah. Yeah, he still had the fro around. Mm -hmm. the fro. Really afro then. Yeah, yeah. He still had the fro around that time. Really afro. But yeah, like. So, um, yeah, man, we all, we all, it was a gang of us, like, from our generation. Like, I'm past the mm -hmm. older homies now. Like, now I'm right here with, you know, the Hush the Rob, mm -hmm. the, the Copy Supremes, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and shit like that, whatever. So, we, we was all in there, man, just. And that's how you guys kind of all meshed, just from being in the studios? Yeah, we'd be all in yeah. there together, like, niggas. You know, we made another mixtape. That was my first actual shot. Mm -hmm. It was called Hood or Nothing. Okay. Yeah, it had like, I don't know, it had like street signs all on the CD cover. It was like 60 of Slauson. It had all our street signs on there. So oh. I'm the first person mm -hmm. who start talking on the CD when the motherfucker come on, like, you know what I mean? So that was my first time, really. The introduction, really, to it. To the 60s, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know, but man, I like to say it always been there, man. This shit is, you know. Mm -hmm. And moving forward, we about ten plus years now in. Yeah. Yeah. It's about ten years. What from what what point? From Well, from that point yeah. we're talking about so when did that mixtape drop? I heard nothing two thousand five. Well that's that well shit, that's yeah. already that's yeah. ten two, plus. Yeah, two thousand five. Yeah. But I got a little break though because I went to the pen. Fifteen years. Yeah, yeah. I, I went to the pen for four years. Were you in there for four years? <laughs> yeah. Dang. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you had to sit for a while. Yeah. Were you making music in the pen? I did. It's only so much you can do, but. I did. I, I, I made music. I, uh, I wrote what I'm doing right now. I wrote interviews now. Like, when I get into the moment of interview, I wrote everything that has to do with the music game. I wrote it down in the pen. And I acted out on the pen. Like, when I get in that position, this is how I'm going to be. You know what I mean? This is what story I'm going to tell. You know what I mean? So I did everything. Like, and more importantly, though, in the pen, I retrospect, like, you know, my life. And, you know, um, I like to say, if I got a camera on myself and my kids can watch me utilizing my time, what would I be looking like to my kids? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because sitting up in there, I thought about everything that I was doing wrong. You know what I mean? Uh, basically not having no purpose yeah. you know what I'm saying so yeah. he's just doing everything you know and it, nothing means nothing Absolutely. like you can go to the club and go spin 20 bands and you don't even have a paper trail yep. to nothing but if you own the business yes. and you go to the club and you go spin 20 bands then 
at least somebody's gonna write about your business and say, you know what, you know what I mean? And it's like a tax write-off. It means something like, so I have a purpose, you know what I mean? I, always, I, mean, I wanted to live like, you know, just, that's how I was living before the pen, so. Um, how was how has your journey been, your music journey? I know that, um, especially independent, it's rough. Yeah. You're spending your own money, your own resources. You know, you don't have like the big major label behind you, the money, the, mm -hmm. the marketing, the team. Mm -hmm. You have to create your own team. Right. You know what I mean? You have to find people that you can trust to run your operation. You know what I mean? So how has that journey been? Um, it's been it's been great. Um, for me, it's like once I dive into the music and I'm solely on the music, then I'm getting carried, you know, to the right people. Mm -hmm. you know, like um, yeah. the right person I need. You know, I think it's more so my fault when I stray away from the music mm -hmm. and like, um, you know, put things before the music. It can be whether one or whether girls or women, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but as far as like, when I'm focused and I'm in the music, then I'm always led to the next right person that, you know, I need them to do what I need to do. And it's not no ticket on that, ain't no price on that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, it's been A1. That's amazing. Because a lot of people I know have that issue, especially independent. Uh, I hear like management yeah. horror stories yeah. um, or, you know, um, having certain people that you grew up with, yeah. not there anymore. You know what I mean? So the fact that you've had a smooth sailing journey is great. Cause only, only when I'm, <laughs> only when I'm locked in, mm -hmm. like it's smooth right now. Like only when I'm locked in, like, okay. you know, but the minute I'm not, then it's like it goes left. It all the way left. It goes left. All, and then the people are like, where the fuck is Rolling Rose at? Where's this music at? Where's this? And, and it's supposed to go left though, because it went left just for you to go right, mm -hmm. right there. Should I say that? Yeah, no, it does. <laughs> so how many official projects have you dropped? Like albums? Is it three? Uh, Four. Um, official. Yeah. Um, officially, since I've been home, I got home in 2011. Okay. So officially, I dropped. Probably five or six. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, five or six. Cause it was uh, the first one was uh, when I came home. It was called Meet the Flowers. Yeah. I, I got to I got to get that on the platform. It's not on the platform right now. Okay. And then the second one I dropped was Flockumentary. That's is that the listening I went to that was down. I think it was downtown. No, not yet. You ain't, I ain't got there yet. Okay. Then my okay. Keep I ain't going. Keep going. Flock, <laughs> it was Flockumentary, bam. And then the next one after Flockumentary was Change Men. Okay. You know, and at that time, I did an interview with you. Uh, at around that time, I had three okay. projects really at that time in the can. You know what I'm saying? At that time, when I did that last interview with you, but it was so it was flockumentary with Change Man. That's the third, and then J Stone. Mm -hmm. I did a, a joint collaboration with J Stone called Flock of the Beats. Okay. Uh huh. And then I came right out of that Flock of the Beats and did Flock of the Beats too. And then I did Truth Hurts. So we had we have five, two first right here, and then this next city right now, where right. I'm at right now. So and that's this would be this would be six. It's, it's called the white one, yeah. Wow, hey, dope. Six projects within so from 2011 to now. 2011, 12 years to now, right? Okay. Eight years, six projects. Yeah. And let's kind of dive into the right one. So the singles out. The right one, yeah. Booming, by the way. Thank it's you. Produced by Hollywood. Yeah. DJ shot the video. Yeah. You were in the middle of slots. <laughs> in the middle, going crazy. First of all, yeah. <laughs> how did you get in the middle of slots? I know it's now. I compare slots yeah. to like the ten. You know, yeah. the ten freeway yeah. east west right. is like bumper to bumper. Yeah. So I figured you just got caught up in some traffic because you was all in. You was you was just walking in between cars. I'm like, Rody is a mess. First yeah. of all, at all of the liquor store. Right. <laughs> like, first of all, right. I know people probably honking at you. Yeah. How you get the shots? Well, DT gets shots. Yeah, man, we fucking we coming off Brian Hurst. DT gets shots, so let's kudos to DT. But you was coming off of Brian Hurst. Shout out my nigga DT, man. Yeah, I was coming off Brian Hurst, and then we were just uh, the car was going slow, the Bentley truck it was going slow, and then we just kept, you know, because there's always a lot of traffic anyway right there. So you know what I mean? So it be backed up from there to west. From, it does. From Chris, you yeah. know what I'm saying? To west, it's always backed up. So. We just came off of Christian Floss is like a, such a popular landmark now. Right. It's it's all touristy. Right. I mean, what, you see all kind of folks over there from Asians to whites to whoever yeah. just on Christian Floss, which is so interesting to right. see. 
there. Yeah. Now it's like a tourist by everybody. Oh, this is where Nipsey, this is Nipsey's store, and this is where he died. Now all of a sudden everybody want to come, right. flick it up. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a bad thing, I guess, shine light. But then again, you know, for people that are from there, it's just different. You know, it's different. It's yeah, different. it's extremely different. And that's yeah. what I'm explaining. That's what my CD about. Like that's why I got the, the artwork is. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the marathon store, it's not that, yeah. and it's the uh, it's the, well, the is the so the right one single cover is not the same as the album. I think it's a picture of you, like your profile. No, no, no. The album is it's the marathon store. Got it. It's the, okay. the Peace Street. Okay. You know, what I'm saying yeah. where everybody you know is there, mm-hmm. and you know that's my lane where I touch in too. As far as like I'm with the whole Peace Street movement. You know, what I'm saying. And that's another reason why I got the title the right one, because I feel like, you know, you got to have the right person in position to even pull that off. You know what I'm saying? So um, on top of the right one, I mean, the world is oversaturated. You know what I'm saying? How do you even pick the right one in anything? How do you pick a relationship? You know what I'm saying? How do you know what's the right one? You know what I mean? When everybody is, you know, everybody think they got. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody think they got. Everybody think they're there. What they say matters, you know what I'm saying? And um, so that's why I named the title the right one. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, man, that motherfucker, um, it's, it's crazy. Uh, the production is solely based, it's a bass man. It's named Dominique. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you have one producer for the rest of the entire? Pretty much, but, and then I got uh, Hollywood mm-hmm. with the single the right one. I got uh, my boy, uh, B12 the Hitman. Okay. That's the song with me and Killer Twan. And who else on the uh, the right one? Another Are you shooting the video with Killer Twan? Yeah, I'm gonna shoot a video with me and Killer Twan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot a video of that one. Um and like I said, man, the C D is it's like you can't compare one song to the next okay. because each song for hip hop, I cover each genre of a hip hop record. Meaning you only got one female record. Meaning you got one record where I'm spazzing, going crazy. Meaning you got one record that's far-fetched, like some Kendrick Lamar shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's 10 records, and you can't compare one to the next. When you say this is probably the biggest range album, like when people can really hear your range as far as just as you described, like you're going to get a little bit of every element of hip-hop. Yeah. Album. Yeah, yeah. Shows like what you're really capable of. Like, Absolutely. I got this way, I got this way. The beat is here, now the beat is here. Absolutely. Yeah, you're going to hit different elements. There you go. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. definitely looking forward to that. Um, I know last time we spoke, you were like, I got 10 more years in this music. Yeah. You were yeah. very, you were very confident. Like, right. I don't know how old you are, yeah. but uh, are yeah. you coming to your age? Uh, I, 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 I do. And we ain't gotta talk about that. I do yeah. and I don't. You okay. know what I'm saying? But I mean, um, you're, I'm sure. I'm you're older than it. Yeah, I'm older than it. Okay. Yeah, you feel me? But that gives me an idea. Yeah, I'm older than it. So, um, like I said, I got, I got ten more years uh, because I, um, I had a whole career on the streets. You know what I'm saying? So, by me having a whole career, meaning I was thirty on the, I was <laughs> before I took this shit serious. I was thirty on the streets. You know what I'm saying? And, it kind of remind me of a, of, a, of a Jay-Z story where, you know, Jigga was an old nigga on the street. Yeah, he was. And he did a lot of different things yeah. and he was a successful street nigga. Yeah. So I was a successful street nigga, you know what I'm saying? And I could really tap into stories from right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, gang of stories from there. This city right here, I'm tapping in on 2020. Mm-hmm. So the right one. What a year. Golly. Yeah. Yeah. What a year. Yeah. Started off with Kobe. Yeah. Um, then COVID, of course. Yeah. We had a whole Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been a hell of a year. It's crazy. But the fact that you're still being able to stay mentally healthy is important. Right. Physically healthy is important. Yeah. Because um, a lot of people are not making it through this. Nope. At all. Um, we're seeing businesses right before our eyes close down, mm-hmm. right in our own neighborhoods, of people losing their jobs, not being able to recuperate. People are just mentally ill, you know. So the fact that you're still able to stay sane through it all speaks yeah. value. Yeah. I mean, we root for you. You definitely got another ten years plus. Very excited to hear the album. Yeah. You having a listening? Yeah. 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 I will be there. Yeah. <laughs> I will be there. Ten. Ten plus. Ten plus. GTI is gonna be artists. 
from GTR. Y'all gonna see soon. I ain't gonna speak on that too much, but um, I'm gonna go down south. I'm gonna touch here, you feel me? Um, it's the takeover, it's starting right now. I got 10 more. I'm gonna say it again, I got 10 more, nigga. Like, I'm going crazy. Y'all about to go crazy. Good. Yeah, yeah. yeah and you should. Yeah. Is there anything that you wanna leave us with before we get out of here? I do. I look for the city of LA. Man, I'm coming from the east side, the west side, north. I represent all this shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I'm from the Crenshaw district. You know, neighborhood to the neighborhoods. Um, it's my home girl, uh, she from the district too. And, you know, we're coming, man. And that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, how can we keep up with you? Um, so how can we find you? Do you have a social social media handles, your website? Yeah, um, Roddy Rose on um, Twitter, R O A D I E R O S E. Uh, Roddy Rose, Instagram, and Facebook. You feel me? That's all I'm messing with. All right, dope. Well, so glad to have done this again. Yeah. We here again. Yeah. We made it happen. <laughs> Sound is good. We look good. Yeah. And until next time, Easy thanks again. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Um, don't let that bother you, boy. You still my child. Free killer. I ain't joked in a while. This shit serious. Reason why I ain't fucking your bitch right now. Lie. I ain't got a bitch. I need the right one. The next slow nigga need the right one. Tell that bitch pay up. You need the right one. Cut from the hood, but cut not the right one. Yeah, bitch, you need the right one. Flocking hot. Hurry up. Pick the right one. Feel car.